Prior to the unfortunate events in Japan, the world as a whole was undergoing a nuclear renaissance, uh, generally recognizing nuclear power as a key element in uh, low carbon electricity generation. Uh, that being said, it was also struggling a little bit with, first of all, it's a very, a lot of uh, significant technology goes into one of these plants, but the major crux of the slowdown in development was around the uncertainty of the cost of these plants. Generally speaking, the reactors go for, you know, upwards of $10 billion a project. The certainty around delivery of these projects within discrete cost uh, and schedule parameters was, was really, industry was very much struggling with it. Uh, after Japan happened, I think that layered another level of complexity on it that while what we may find coming out of Japan is certain things could have been done with the design uh, to make that a safer situation, unfortunately there still are uh, implications around natural disasters, particularly seismic activity, that uh, no matter how much you design it, if the ground opens up, you're gonna, there's going to be a risk, of the pro a risk for the project. So as a whole now, as the nuclear industry as a whole is kind of taking a little bit of a pause, reassessing where it stands, trying to address some of these issues, and then hopefully sometime in the next year or so it will move forward. The secondary effect from all of this is anybody with an existing nuclear fleet is taking a very, very close look at safety. As a whole, we see in the nuclear industry take a little bit of a dip with development of new nuclear technology. There's definitely an up in the amount of projects that are going forward to make these systems more reliable and to, to, to squeeze additional capacity out of the reactors that we do have. But right now, uh, the entire world is just taking a little bit of a pause as we reassess what the implications of Japan means, and it might be a little bit before we figure it out.